Hi, I'm Regan Breeze from the Dryden Fire Service. I'm an emergency education officer, and tonight we're at Domino's Pizza Store in Dryden. We've teamed up with Domino's Pizza Dryden uh, with the Dryden Fire Service for the whole entire fire prevention week. And what we're doing tonight is we're doing the smoke alarm program. How it works is that if the owner says that we can come into their home and, and check and inspect their smoke alarm and it works, Domino's Dryden will give them a free meal. Good afternoon. Hi, got a whole, oh, a whole entourage, eh? Yeah. Come on in. <laughs> This smoke alarm here, this is a hard, hardwired smoke alarm. This one here runs off the power from the house itself. Um, and what we tell people is uh, when they buy a, a hardwired smoke alarm, we ask them to have a backup uh, power source as well, which is usually a battery. And the reason for it is that in the event of a blackout or a power failure, you're still gonna have uh, your, your safety and you're still gonna have uh, an awareness if anything does happen inside your home, say such as a fire or anything else like that, because the battery will end up taking over for the power source that is not able to get into because of the power outage, of course. How you doing this evening? Good. Can we come in and test your smoke alarm? Perfect. Every story within a home is required to have a working smoke alarm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put one out, out in the open uh, where potentially the bedrooms could be so that in the event that a fire does start in the basement, uh, it'll be quick detection for the people that are within the bedroom area be able to wake up and evacuate the house really quick. And the reason for that is because a home can basically be engulfed in flames within three minutes. Can we come in and touch the smoke alarm? Right on, perfect. So the first thing I want to look for is uh, I can usually tell by the age of the smoke alarm itself because the smoke alarm is only good for 10 years. Um, if it's really discolored, it usually indicates that it's been up on the ceiling for quite a long time. I also look for the location now where it's uh, been uh, installed because a lot of people don't understand where they should be installed. They install them in places where there's dead uh, airspace, which wouldn't really help you out. And we want to put it in an area where that's going to give us the best uh, detection. Um, some people put them in front of uh, washrooms, which at the same time, steam will be uh, a nuisance for this alarm and it'll keep making it going off all the time. And with that being said, uh, with the alarm going act, being activated all the time, it actually kills a battery a lot sooner as well too. So um, a lot of people say change batteries once. Uh, we like to remind people to change batteries twice a year. So it makes the beep, works. Now check on the date. Um, all, all current smoke alarms that are uh, less than the 10 year lifespan actually have a manufacturer's date on the back of it when, when it was being manufactured. So this one here tells me that it was manufactured on June 1st, 2011. So from there on, uh, we're good till uh, uh, 2021. So this gentleman's safe here. So these are these are the bedrooms right here, though, right? Uh -huh. These are the bedrooms. Right? Okay, it has it has to be where the sleeping area is. Uh, it's a requirement under the Ontario Fire Code to have one on each story and outside of each sleeping corridor. So with the bedrooms being located right here, uh, this smoke alarm here itself will um, will justify her having a working smoke alarm on on this story right now. We also get people that will have. Um, two smoke alarms on each on each story, and that's that's excellent, and we have no problems with that at all. And if you think of it, it's actually uh, it makes sense because most people uh, most of your life is spent sleeping, right? So most fires do occur. The fatal fires occur at nighttime when people are sleeping. So you need the er the most earliest detection that you could possibly get, and having it outside your your sleeping area is the most ideal and logical area to have it. A lot of the common problems that we find with smoke alarms is uh, poor location. Um, also, people just don't have the education that uh, smoke alarms are only good for 10 years. The device inside, the mechanism uh, that's inside the smoke alarm could get clogged, dusted up by pet dander, if you have a pet, uh, spider webs. Um, so we ask people to vacuum them because we encountered a lot of them that are dusty as well. Um, there's just a whole pile of them, and even with you being with us tonight, you can see how busy we are just with smoke alarms itself, and some people don't even have them. Uh, and we're trying to do it tonight, educate them and tell them that smoke alarms are the law, 
It's a requirement under the Ontario Fire Code, and it's a $235 ticket right off the bat.